as an entrepreneur, you're constantly managing change. Well, as a leader, especially a leader in a moment of crisis, you have to be highly prepared to adapt and to pivot on a moment's notice because the environment that we were in yesterday is very different than the environment that we're in today, which could be completely different than the environment that we're in tomorrow. You have a team around you that is just doing these things. And I want to know because a lot of people, a lot of companies, businesses included, my business included, have been shaken through this crisis, through this pandemic. And you have people working with you. I want to know about how you're leading them through this crisis, what has happened. And we, we want to learn from you. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah. Good question, Sean. Really important question, something that I think everyone is kind of trying to find the right answer to. I think first and foremost, it's really important for any and every leader to show up, to be there, to be accessible, to be available, not to hide, not to duck, not to run, but to make clear that if you need anything, I'm here. If you need anything, we're here. And during this time, that's what people need. That's what your employees need. That's what your customers need. That's what every stakeholder in your organization needs. They want to know that you're going to be there for them. I've been doing a lot of interviews uh, since the coronavirus crisis has hit. And um, it seems like everyone wants to know, how do we lead during moments of crisis? Before coronavirus uh, struck, my interviews were about entrepreneurship and about leadership and about management, but it wasn't about how do I lead during a crisis. Now that's what everyone wants to talk about. And I've been trying to drill home three main points. I think that leaders, number one, need to be trustworthy. Leaders need to be honest, need to be truthful, need to be transparent. Leaders need to have credibility. Sean, in your organization, when you say something, you need everyone on your team to believe you. You need everyone on your team to know that when you say something, it's truthful. That's really important. Number two, leaders need to be very communicative. Leaders need to be out in front. Like I said before, it's a very easy time to hide under the covers. It's a very easy time to duck and run. But as they say, you know, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Now is the time for the tough to get going. And number three, leaders need to be flexible. Leaders need to be nimble. Like every entrepreneur, when you're an entrepreneur, one of the first things you learn is the importance of managing change. When you have a job, Things can be kind of steady, kind of stable. You know, when I had jobs, I sort of did the same thing day in and day out. In the morning I did this, in the afternoon I did that, late afternoon I did that. You know, when, when some jobs it was almost like to the minute, I did the same thing every day. As an entrepreneur, you're constantly managing change. Well, as a leader, especially a leader in a moment of crisis, you have to be highly prepared to adapt and to pivot on a moment's notice because the environment that we were in yesterday is very different than the environment that we're in today, which could be completely different than the environment that we're in tomorrow. And the only way that you can adapt is by having a mindset that is open to change. That's right. That's right. Fantastic. So those are three things that pretty much all leaders have to practice, communicate well, be truthful, and be nimble, be flexible. Now, I know that you have had more than a decade of experience in leading people, 
both in your professional career and now as an entrepreneur leading people from all over the world, you have a global team. And I just want to know how your coaching has helped your leadership. You have, you're a creator and host in another podcast. That's the 30 minute mentors. I'm just wondering, are you on Spotify? I am. I am. Yeah. All right. So for my listeners, please check that out. He is on Spotify. Just search 30 minute mentors and you talk about business leadership and personal or professional development. That is something that a lot of people right now need. People right now need growth. People right now need to broaden their horizons. There are different values that people can bring to the table. As you mentioned, the home office has boomed. Who would have known, right? That this pandemic would create industries with huge demand, but it has also shut down a lot of industries that we have held on to. So how has your mentorship and your personal growth and your coaching helped your leadership style? That's a great question. And um, Sean, by the way, thank you so much for that nice, really nice plug of my show. And I'll just add uh, for anyone interested in checking out 30 minute mentors, Sean was telling me off the air that Spotify is the most popular platform in the Philippines. I think that's really cool. So I am on Spotify. You punch in 30 minute mentors. It's all spelled out. So you spell out the word 30 minute mentors. You could also mm -hmm. go to my website, 30 minute mentors.com mm -hmm. find it there. So I stream it there as well. Sean, I've always believed in the power of mentorship. I've been a huge beneficiary of great mentorship. I've had great mentors in my life and still do. What I also believe in is a concept called that I call mini mentors. I've written about it. I speak about it. And what I like to call mini mentors are not necessarily the traditional mentor who you go out to lunch with once a month, who may be a deep relationship in your life, who may have the kind of lasting and powerful impact that you think about on a regular basis. But a mini mentor is someone who you might talk to once, or maybe you talk to them once a year or once every other year, but there's someone who can add enormous value to you in that one interaction. And that's what I try to do through 30 minute mentors. That's what I try to do through my show. I try to bring the best network of mentors possible to listeners because that's been invaluable to me. That's been invaluable to my success as a leader. I can tell you this, everyone learns differently. Everyone grows differently. Everyone develops differently. Some people learn by picking up 300 page books and blowing through them. That's never been the best way for me to learn. There are lots of books that I've loved reading. I don't know if David Halberstam is popular in the Philippines, but he's my favorite writer of all time. Uh, I love Malcolm Gladwell. But my best way of learning has always been to pick up the phone or to meet someone for lunch and to just pick their brain. And that's the style of learning that I'm trying to bring to my audience in 30 minute increments. So um, the 30 minute mentor, most of your episodes or all of your episodes would be around 30 minutes. Is that right? I try my best to keep them to 30 minutes. My biggest challenge is the guests who I'm interviewing are literally the most successful people you can think of. Yeah, I could Founders see. Founders and CEOs, yeah. Founders, so CEOs, I mean, they're all here. Rick Barry, NBA legend is here. Deloitte Consulting CEO, Dan Helfrich is here. We have, you have big names in your show. That's fan. I'm going to definitely check it out right after this recording. And if you, if you guys are listening, my audience are listening, you should try to check it out, please. You're doing yourself a favor if you tune in to his podcast. I appreciate that, Sean. I was just going to say the biggest challenge for me is keeping them to 30 minutes. I want to be um, you know, respectful of the platform because I know that that 30 minutes is a, a time that allows people to really consume content during a commute or during a workout. It's, I feel like it's the right amount of time, but... It's a challenge for me because when you're talking to the CEO of Deloitte Consulting or the CEO of Gold's Gym or to Rick Barry or mm -hmm. to 
a retired four-star admiral. You want you have so many questions you want to ask them. Yeah, and I'm sure. uh, it could be a challenge keeping it to thirty minutes, but I try my best. I'm sure. I'm, I mean, if if it was me, I mean, right now I'm having so much fun just asking you these questions. <laughs> this is great, from Sean. You. I'm loving it. And if, if it was, yeah, if it, if it was any one of your guests, I'm sure it would take me more than thirty minutes to just get <laughs> to the you know the heart of the matter. And so, I I likewise don't want to impose a long time on our interview. We have had, you know, like more than 30 minutes already, and I've learned a lot. I hope you guys listening in have learned a lot. How you have to focus on one business idea. If you're just starting out, you have to focus. And if you're starting out through this pandemic, through this crisis, you have to communicate, you have to be nimble, and you have to be honest and transparent. Always remember that if you have an opportunity to start your business through this crisis, you have, you have to work with people. That's really how it is in the business world. And you have to practice these three things from Adam Mendler. Again, ladies and gentlemen, that's Mr. Adam Mendler, an entrepreneur, a public speaker, a coach and consultant, and someone who accepts his regrets in life. And he has changed his direction in life right now. I hope you learned a lot from that. Adam, thank you so much for guesting in our show. We really appreciate it and we're better for it. Sean, thanks so much for having me. Thank you for all those kind of words. This was awesome. I had such a great time and really appreciate the opportunity to spend the time with you and with your audience.